Hey guys, Sausage here, and welcome to another loadout hints and tips. Today we are going to cover the beam weapon. Now, first few things first are about the beam weapon. Um, it's a really good weapon in the game. I actually one of my favourites out of. There's only four really to pick from, but it's one of my favourites. Uh, launcher being the favourite of them all. Uh, really into the pulse now at the moment, but that's for another video. Uh, beam is designed to be a extremely accurate gun, as you can see, 100% and 100% here. Um, it's designed to be, it can literally go across the map. It says range 125, that matters not. It doesn't seem to have a limit to the range. Uh, I guess the damage drops if it goes any further than that, I can't be certain. I've never really gotten to the point where I can snipe someone from one half of the map to the other, because the maps aren't designed like that. But yeah, so the beam is designed to be extremely good with the accuracy, and because of that, it suffers in power to balance things out a bit. Because obviously, if it was an extremely powerful weapon that was already 100%, 100%, that would just be OP and just not usable. But the base beam pretty much is um, like this, and I will show you exactly what it does. This is the very base beam, the one that you will start with 100% of the game. Sorry, at the very beginning of the game, 100%, what am I saying, I'm an idiot? Right. When my targets decide to spawn, okay, these ones first. So this, so at close range, it's like this. Okay, you can see tens and ones, and then there are two randomly. Uh, then medium range, which is about this, it's like this, which is like eights, tens and ones, and then there's an eleven and a four in there. And then of course, if I go all the way over here to this thing, I can still hit them, and of course, it will shoot exactly where I'm aiming. And then if I go all the way over here, I think there is a way I can get on that. Hang on. Oh, come on. You've done it before. I've, uh, when messing around, I can get on this like first time. Right, over here. Okay, so you see someone over there. You're standing there sniping people. And you can still get it. So you get the idea. They're extremely accurate uh, weapons to be used, uh, mostly at long range. I highly recommend not using these at close range. I see a lot of people trying to do it and it's, yes they're accurate but they're really really awkward to get someone who's rolling around like an idiot. Okay so a couple of things you can do with this. Uh, you've got the usual barrels. Uh, obviously light assault just means it will increase the rate of fire and lowers the damage. So it just pretty much means they'll take damage faster. Sniper does exactly what you would expect it to do. High damage, low rate of fire and a high reload time because of it. Gatling does exactly what it says pretty much. You just... It, now people would think that it would shoot a load of lasers in one go. So like you just go... Uh, it would shoot like multiple lasers but no it's still a single beam. It just plows the damage faster. So it can still be a single beam. You just blast things faster. So yeah. So here's an example, I know this is a really bad example, but say you're trying to shoot someone in the game, this is what it's like trying to do close range. You're almost like that all the time. Jumping around obviously because you've got to try not to get shot by the person who's got a better weapon or a weapon that's really awkward. And that's what I mean, it's really awkward to maintain the beam on your target while moving. So it's better to be done at long range or medium range if you have to. Um, yeah, a silencer is one of my favourite things. It suppresses the shots, making them quieter, so that you are hidden from the enemy's radar. Now, how many of you here are radar watchers? I think most players look for the little red dot, and then they aim for the little red dot, and I just clicked out of the screen for some reason. Okay, this still does the same damage, I believe, as the base one. I'm not certain on that, I'll have to check that. But, when using it, uh, let me just... That's the trigger. Uh, silencer, let's see. Uh, 41 and 41, 19. Just a, a, I guess it's just a little bit less and the range is a bit higher. But other than that, there's not really much difference between Assault and Silence. And Headhunter is just like the Sniper one, only it's more powerful, I believe. No, less powerful? What does Headhunter do then? A heavy sniper barrel that excels in headshot damage but, become, but comes at the cost of significant refill. Okay, so it, it excels in headshot damage. So headshot... Wow. Yeah, I'd say it's very good at headshots. I have never really used that. Oh, that by the way, those red rings of death just means your weapon's overheated. One of the key things with beam weapons is they don't actually require ammo. They are unlimited ammo, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, your reload time is your beam cooldown. 
So there are your barrels. Now, payloads are always the same. You've got your Tesla, your health, your pyro, and your juice, but we'll cover that in a bit. Uh, your scopes, uh, for this one you get reco recon scope, bio scanner, optical scope, x-ray scope, and long range scope. Stocks, I never really worry about these because these just improve stability and stuff, but on a weapon that's already 100 and 100, you kind of not really needing stability because it just aims where you point. Triggers, now these are really interested. I, I, in my opinion, the only things you really need to change um, on one of these uh, to get some good damage are your triggers, maybe the cooling, but the most ones are the triggers and the barrel, maybe the payload. So triggers and barrel, in my opinion, this is my opinion, of course, is what affects the bean guns the most. Um, you've got semi-auto, which just is just like a burst thing, so you just press it once. So if I'm, hold I'm holding it down, but it's not doing anything, so you can rapid click and it'll do that. So that's semi-auto trigger. You've got the spooling trigger. This is my favourite trigger. It ploughs through enemies, but at the cost of a uh, wind-up time. So listen, you'll hear the wind-up time, but then watch the damage. So there you go. Um, spooling is one of my favourites. Two burst, I believe it's just a quick two sharps burst. Yeah, like that. So that's your... That is the two burst trigger. You've got the charge trigger. This one is confusing. It takes a while to charge up. Then you release one burst like that. Now, I don't know why people use that. I'm going to say you could probably twin that with snipers before you take a shot. Let me just quickly try. It takes a lot longer to charge, but... Yeah, that's a one hit kill. Near enough. Oh, you don't forget to deheat it afterwards. Something I forgot to do. Take that like that, and then... Yeah, that, if you get them smack in the head, that'll be a one-hit kill. So, okay, that's the point. Three-burst round is the same as the two-burst, but it's just three. Okay, just so you know. Uh, cooling. Heat sinks will be very useful. They take the damage down slightly and increase the rate of fire and the capacity. Uh, let me change this to the assault. I will show you. You get more bang for your buck. You'll notice it's taking me a lot longer to become overheated and of course getting rid of the steam is all done so I recommend using a heatsink uh, liquid cooling increases the damage but lowers your capacity so it does the opposite okay so it'll increase your damage but it'll lower the amount you can fire before you're going to overheat and there you go it already overheated so keep on t on top of that if you wish to use that okay now comes the fun part for me payloads now, you don't have to worry about anything else here. It's just a payload. Tesla. Uh, again, you know it has an arcing effect, which obviously attacks enemies nearby. And you've got health. This is one of the most used guns for healing specs. If you want to be a healer, this is good for single target healing. I shall show you. So imagine you didn't change anything and you just bought that. This would be the base healer. And as you can see... It literally heals them really quick. And it's mostly used for like single target situations. Uh, so for example, if you are following one of your friends on like Capture the Hammer, and he has the hammer, you can zap him to keep him healed. Uh, another one that you might use it in is Death Snatch, if you and a friend are, are going head to head against another opponent. Blitz, I wouldn't recommend single target for Blitz, because obviously everyone's bunched together and you can only focus on one with this. I mean, yeah, you could argue that you could do that, but that, of course, then, uh, uh, you have the bit in between, as you can see with the green gooey stuff. That in there is wasted ammunition, uh, well, cooldown, and it's pointless. Now, um, then, finally, last, but no, by no means, well, actually, not finally, we've still got juice. But, yeah, you've got pyro. A pyro beam is just fiery and death and... I don't recommend pyro beams. A lot of people do use them, but I, I, I don't recommend them. Uh, the only thing I found useful is if you're using a pyro beam on an opponent, it, that will, and they're using a beam gun, it will overheat their beam gun faster. Also, I've heard anyway. And juice, juice is one of these things that will increase your damage and your speed. So if you juice someone, that will increase your damage and your speed. 
your well, their damage, their speed, and yours, because obviously you get the buff too. So yeah, these are really good single target guns. If you're going to use something that's going to do multi-target healing, I'd probably use something that's like a launcher with a what was it again? Hang on, let me just quickly. Ugh, wrong one. Launcher. If you use um, flak, that would be a better option for a multi-target healer. Uh, I didn't really show the, the Tesla, did I? There you go. Tesla is this. It's a little slow on on the base settings. It's a little slow, but I like it. You do see it quite a lot. One of my favourite, 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 favourite beam builds. Spooling. A lot of people will be like, no, he's using spooling. I use uh, spooling. I use light assault. Yes, I've used light assault. And I use a heat sink. And then I use the bio scan. Yeah, bio scan on. No, he. I use that one. And then there you go. This is one of my favourite builds. Why? Because you get to aim down the sight. This is for a long range thing. So if someone's using blit uh, in blitz, if someone's in blitz, and you want to be one of these people that gets people. So say you like to stand on a rock somewhere, and you're watching the the. the the place where your teammates go in the flag where they're about to stand and capture the control point enemies are stood there build it up and zap them truckers away i mean just look it plows through them and of course uh, being multi-target it's fantastic so if there's more than one person i would highly recommend using something like this to plow through groups of people stood in the same spot um, I'll show you it with fire in case that's your thing. Uh, I personally won't use it, but there you go. So there you go. Obviously, we know fire is damage over time, so if you do stop as they've hidden themselves, they will burn like this. Pop. Now, moving targets. You can get moving targets with bean weapons, like that, for example. But yeah, um, boom, beam weapons are, they're really good, they're really accurate, but they're not very powerful in, in the sense of, I'd say they're more of a support weapon. This is my opinion, they're more of a support weapon. There are a lot of people out there who can use them well, and those people are just absolutely amazing. And if you do come across someone who can use the beam weapon extremely effectively, yeah, you're good as dead. Um, but you... When you come to the beam weapon and come to use it yourself, if you want to use something that's good, I recommend just getting a heat sink, having yourself a scope if you really want to, and not really changing much else, because slug is, in my opinion, the best thing to go for with beam. And then maybe a light assault, but that's just my personal preference. I don't know why, I just like the light assault. As you can see, it doesn't really kill them fast. But there are bound to be some amazing builds out there for beam weapons. Um, spooling, let me try. Spooling with assault. Let's try that, see if that's any better on these. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, if, you can maintain you, you, the, um, if you can maintain the beam on the target, you will plow through them. You will punch a hole through them, as I've just demonstrated. Pop. But yeah, so beam weapons on a whole are mostly for those for people that like to be long range. Um, who don't really like to get in the fray and everything. I highly recommend you have a separate weapon when you go in for close combat, like have a shotgun or anything other than a beam weapon. There are some people out there who can use them, as I have explained, but unless that's your thing, unless you're really good at it, I wouldn't do it if you're a new player to this. So, I have been Sausage, this has been the beam chassis, and I hope I've explained things a little better for you, and hope that I've covered um, enough on the beam weapon so that you can go out, practice around with the beam weapons, and have some fun. So, I shall catch you next time, take care, and goodbye.